Elf Beauty Start did a 15x in the past five years, and obviously I have missed it. But can it do a 3x from the current price of $165? And that's what I'm going to cover in this video. In doing so, I'm going to cover Elf's business model. I'm going to cover its financials. And finally, I'll do a valuation to show the upside. Let's look at Elf's business model. The acronym ELF stands for eyes, lips, and face, and they are also into skincare products. So largely this is a cosmetic company and it's a number one teen favorite cosmetic brands for fourth consecutive season. And they're also available in Target, Walmart, and Ulta Beauty stores. Elf Beauty is offering premium quality, accessible prices, broad appeal, vegan, cruelty free, Elf Clean, and Fade Trade certified products. And they're also saying that the sales and profit per employee is three to five X more than their competitors like L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, Coty, etc. Elf's marketing is also tech savvy. As you can see on the screen, they're on TikTok, they're on Roblox, there's Apple Vision Pro, and they're also on Twitch. Elf is also constantly innovating. As you can see on the screen, back in 2018, they had eight categories of product and now they have more than 16 categories of products. In addition, they also got into skincare products by acquiring this company Naturium for $333 million for a combination of cash and company stock. So let's now move on to the financials. As you can see on the screen, at $165 stock price, their market cap is about $9.2 billion. And for the past 12 months, their revenue was about $890 million. So that's a price to sales ratio of about 11, which is very expensive when compared to their competitor, Ulta Beauty, which had market cap of $21 billion and has a revenue of $11 billion. That's the price to sales of two. So considering Ulta Beauty, Elf is extremely expensive stock. With respect to revenue growth rate, as you can see on the screen, they were growing very slow, like barely 20% until September of 2022. And afterwards, they have accelerated their revenue growth significantly. They grew 30%, 47%, 61%, 70%, 79%. So they kept on increasing the revenue growth. Some of that is organic and some of that is through acquisitions. But you can see why the stock went up so much after September of 2022. So we do know Elf is growing their revenue really fast. So let's look at their fiscal 2024 outlook. They have revised their fiscal 2024 outlook and they have increased their target to 980 to 990 million dollars of net sales. This represents about 70% growth year over year. So it's incredible growth. With reference to the balance sheet, as you can see on the screen, they have $72 million of cash and cash equivalents and $164 million of long-term debt. So the balance sheet is not exactly super, but since they are making acquisitions, they will continue to need more cash and continue to dilute the shareholders because for them to continue good growth, they have to get some inorganic growth as well with some acquisitions, right? So the balance sheet is not so great. Let's look at their most recent income statement to get an idea of their margins. As you can see on the screen, in the most recent quarter, they made about $270 million of revenue. And out of that, $191 million is the gross profit. So that's 70% gross margin, which is incredible. When I compared it with Ulta Beauty, which only has 40% gross margins and 12% net margin, I thought Elf could do easily 25 to 30% net profit margin. But then I compared it with Estee Lauder, which also has 70% gross margin, but Estee Lauder is struggling to get to teen profit margins. Their profit margins are in a single digit, and in one of their best quarters, they achieved 17.5% net margin. So I'm not entirely sure if Elf can get to a good net profit margin because a lot of their sales is through digital. When you sell through digital media, you can get much higher margins, but when you do it through a store, you have to pay for the store's expenses, right? And that's going to reduce the net income because the operating expenses are high. But in any case, I want to show that currently, ELF is achieving 10% net profit margin. With respect to number of outstanding shares, as you can see on the screen, last year they had 56 million and now they have 58 million. So that's low single digit dilution. So that's going to continue to happen because if they want to grow, they have to invest a lot. 
The stock based compensation of this company is about $29 million in the most recent quarter. That's almost 10% of their revenue. It's not exactly less. Let's now move on to the valuation. As usual, I'm going to show two cases, one with reasonable assumptions and the other one with great execution. And before I show you the numbers, I want to clarify that this is not financial advice. I'm not qualified to give financial advice. Let's now look at the case with reasonable assumptions. As you can see on the screen, for fiscal 2024, they're going to make close to a billion dollars of revenue. And they said they're going to grow about 70% revenue year over year in the most recent quarter. But I'm assuming 25% growth rate for the next five years. This is because as the company gets bigger and bigger, it's hard for them to grow. Right now, they are under $1 billion, so they can grow faster. But once they get to 2 or $3 billion of revenue, it's going to be really, really hard for them to grow. So that's why 25% year-over-year growth on an average for the next five years would put them at about $3.5 billion of revenue in 2028. Don't think that $3.5 billion is less. It's 3.5x the current revenue in five years. So that's already impressive growth. It's not easy to achieve. And I'm assuming a net profit margin is 17.5%. As I said before, they have impressive gross margin of 70%, but if they do a lot of in-store sales, their margin is going to be less because the operating expenses are high. And I've already shown you the example of Estee Lauder, which has 70% margin, gross margin, and is struggling to make low teens net profit margin, right? So I'm assuming 17.5%, which is on the high side, because I'm assuming that they're going to do more and more digital sales and increase that margin, right? So with that, they will have about $590 million of net income in 2028. I'm giving it a premium multiple of 30 because this is very popular in teens and they're very tech savvy in marketing, right? Normally, I would have given a 25 multiple, but I'm just going to give a 30 multiple because of their diversification and popularity of brand, right? So with that, the market cap in 2028 would be about $18 billion. Currently, they have 58 million outstanding shares and they're acquiring companies with stock and cash, right? And they're also giving stock-based compensation. They don't make much profit at the moment. So they will continue to dilute the shareholders. So I'm assuming 3% dilution for the next five years, with which they will have 66 million outstanding shares in 2028. When I divide the $18 billion of market cap with 66 million outstanding shares, I get a stock price of $266. Currently, they're at 161, right? So that's about 65% gain in five years, which is going to beat the index, but the numbers have to be true. I assume 25% growth rate. It has to achieve that and 17.5% net margin. This is what I am a bit nervous about. They may have a lesser net profit margin than this, but I'm giving them the benefit of doubt with their gross margin of 70%. So in the reasonable assumptions case, they will get to 65% gain in five years. It is going to beat the index, but it's not super. Let's now move on to the great execution case in which I'm assuming 35% growth year over year for the next five years for them to make about $5 billion of revenue. That is currently they're making $1 billion of revenue. I'm assuming that in the next five years, they're going to 5x their revenue. It's going to be very, very impressive if they could do that. And they have to do it with both organic and inorganic growth. They have to acquire some companies and add that revenue to the existing revenue, right? And also grow their current product base. I'm still going to keep 17.5% net profit margin with which they will have close to $900 million of net income in 2028. I'm assigning a premium multiple of 35 with which their market cap in 2028 would be about $31 billion. And I'm keeping the dilution same with which this company would be worth about $474 per share in 2028. Currently they're at 161, right? So that's about 195% gain in five years, almost a 3x. This is impressive gain, but these assumptions have to hold true. 35% growth rate year over year and 17.5% net margin. The current growth rate is very impressive and they can definitely continue that if they execute very well because this is still a small company and we know Ulta Beauty makes about $12 billion of revenue, right? And we're only talking about $5 billion in 2028. So ELF can definitely do this, but the probability is less. To conclude, in the reasonable assumptions case, I'm looking at a gain of 65% and in the great execution case, I'm looking at a 3x. But when I invest in a stock for myself, I look at the 
reasonable assumptions getting which I'm getting 65% gain in five years. It is impressive on its own, but when I look into the competitor Alta Beauty, it's currently trading at about $450 and it will also give me 65% gain by 2028. If you look in, you know, if you watch my Alta Beauty video, I do the valuation there. It's cheap now and it's a good long-term hold. It's a very established company and I also assumed low single digit or high single digit growth for that company and they could probably beat that, right? So thinking between Elf and Alta, for my personal journey, I would rather buy Alta than Elf because I only look at the reasonable assumptions case. Of course, I do not own either of these. I don't own Elf or I do not own Alta, but if I were to buy, I prefer Alta Beauty because that's my investing style. But in your case, if you think the great execution case growth rates and margins are possible, then this can do a 3x or even more if people are willing to pay a higher multiple, right? And Alta Beauty doesn't have the chance. I don't think Alta Beauty will 3x at all because it's already a matured company. It's already having close to $12 billion of revenue. There's not much it can grow. It cannot triple its revenue, right? So. For my personal journey, I'm going to stick to Alta Beauty if I want to buy a stock in this sector. And again, it comes down to personal choice, uh, but I think there is a reasonable chance that this could get to 3x. But $161 is very pricey for me. So I've seen this stock being volatile, so I'd probably wait for it to drop to $130-ish if I even want to start a position. Otherwise, I'm going to stay away from ELF. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.